Welcome back to Ashford Common Baptist Church as Chris continues his series from Nehemiah. Nehemiah 4, we talked a few weeks ago, attacks on the community as they're trying to build this wall, there was attacks from the outside. Nehemiah 5, about attacks from the inside, where Satan tried to stir up civil war. And this last time and this time were about attacks on the leader. Between 200 and 300 AD in the Roman Empire, there was two or three massive attacks on the church. And they went for two things. One, the scriptures, burn them, destroy them. Two, leaders. So Nehemiah 6 is two attacks, four attacks on the leadership, on Nehemiah in particular. Two more attacks this week. We looked at two last time. Two more this time. Now the wolf's putting on sheep's clothing and he tries to attack Nehemiah. <clears throat> Notice, oh, we'll look at the passage first. Um, Michael, can you read uh, Nehemiah 6, 10 to 14 for me? Thank you. One day when I went into the house of Shemaiah, son of Deliah, son of Mehetamal, who was confined to his house, he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple. And let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you. Indeed, tonight they are coming to kill you. But I said, should a man like me run away? Would a man like me go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Then I perceived and saw that God had not sent him at all, but he had pronounced a prophecy against me, because Tobiah and Sambalat had hired him. He was hired for this purpose to intimidate me and make me sin by acting in this way, and so they could give me a bad name in order to taunt me. Remember Tobiah and Sambalat, O oh my God, according to these things that they did, and also the prophetess Nodiah, and the rest of the prophets who want to make me afraid. Thank you. So, um, so we, 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 this guy puts on the sheep's clothes and, and tries to be friendly with them. And sometimes Satan that works that way. Mm. He uses Nehemiah's sense of self-protection as a lie. They're after you, and I'm here to help you. I'll pray for you. Let's go into the temple and do that. I'll not let you down. Let's seek asylum there. Sounds great, doesn't it? Very authentic, indeed. It sounds just like a prophet in Israel because they often spoke in poetry and laments were part of their scheme and they went one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, sorry, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So a long line, short line, long line, short line. <coughs> the steadfast enough of the Lord never ceases. Is a long line in Hebrew, and then his mercies never come to an end, is a short line. Mm -hmm. So this uh, had all the marks of being a true prophecy. Everything mm -hmm. seemed right, but it was designed to frighten the guy. This guy was hired by the enemy, Sanballat, to pretend to be a godly friend. Be careful of people using religion to get you in compromising situations. You know, you, you let your, bar your barriers down and and you don't know what's happening. This man is a false prophet, delivering an oracle intending to frighten the Nehemiah into doing mm -hmm. something wrong, to paralyze him with fear. And then he'll fall into a terrible sin. Because if Nehemiah had followed through the advice he'd been given, he'd come over as a weak, selfish, pathetic coward, gone forever with his leadership uh, credentials going. They'd all gone forever. Also, to go in that part of the temple was out of bounds for lay people. Mm. And Nehemiah was a lay man. In Numbers 4, in Numbers, sorry, I don't know which chapter, if a lay man went into the temple, mm. he could be stoned to death. It was a death penalty. Mm. And he had broken the laws of holiness for the temple, committing sacrilege. Mm. Remember King Uzziah? who did that and was struck down with leprosy and he lost everything mm -hmm. for the rest of his reign, his son was uh, in charge. Mm -hmm. This is a cunning plan, full of deception. It would destroy Nehemiah and his reputation 
and the completion of the wall building. Now, of course, it was almost complete, but almost complete is not the same as complete. The last touches haven't been put up, so it could have been easily destroyed. Most important, Nehemiah had a brilliant, trusting, relying relationship with God. In real faith. That would have been destroyed if it uh, fallen to the slaughter. We've already met one attack which tried to destroy his relationship with the emperor. emperor. Mm -hmm. This is an attack to try and destroy his relationship with God, and there's another attack coming up as well. The prophet was hired by Tobiah and Sambalat. He was paid to deliver a false prophecy. It happens quite a bit in the Old Testament. He's not alone. And also the prophet Noadiah, prophetess Noadiah, and the rest of the prophets. So there are a few false prophets there in Jerusalem. But there's obviously lots of good prophets as well. Um, so this guy, Nehemiah, faced a bunch of male and female prophets dedicating to destroying the community. It's rather like a person who writes computer viruses. Okay, they're dedicated to produce programs, but they're writing programs to destroy people mm. and systems, only to do evil, and that's what these guys were doing. Mm. What's Nehemiah's response? He smells a rat. Mm. He realises his whole situation is to discredit him in the eyes of the people. Discernment is what he needs, and God sends him this discernment so he can smell and see all the deception. And we all need to pray daily, give me discernment, mm -hmm. so I'll not deceive. Deception, and self-deception especially, is, is a terrible thing. Can I ask Lindsay to read number two? The simple believes everything, but the prudent gives thought to his steps. Mm. The prudent man is careful, he evaluates, he considers... And if Nehemiah had collapsed into this trap, all his enemies would wind up and ridicule him. You see, he's only concerned for himself, they would have all said. Not to mention the sacrilege. So beware of false prophets. Can you read number three for me, Sonia? John 4. Be not it. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit <coughs> that does not confess Jesus is not from God. Mm. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, of which you have heard, that is coming. And now it is already in the world. Mm. Many false prophets have gone into the world. Don't believe every spirit. Test the spirit. Prophecy could be good from God, but it might be false prophecy from the evil one. Mm -hmm. So Nehemiah is walking by faith. He can rely on God to protect him. And he carried on doing that, ignoring the deception. Little children, you're from God and have conquered them. For the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Great is he who is in you than the one in the world. Now, the final fourth attack on Nehemiah. And Debbie, could you read it for me? Yeah. Uh, Nehemiah 6, 15 to 19. Thank you. So the war was finished on the 25th day of the month of the year in 52 days. And when all our enemies heard of it, all the nations around us were afraid and felt greatly in their own esteem. They perceived that this work had been accomplished with the help of, the God, of our God. Moreover, in those days, the nobles of Judea sent many letters to Tobiah, and Tobiah's letters came in to them. For many in Judah were bound by a cloak to him, because he was a son-in-law of Shechem, son of Barak, and the son of Jehovah. Had married the daughter of Meshua, son of Herachika. Also, he spoke of his good deeds in his presence and reported my words to him. 
Thank you. Sorry about the difficult words. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One of the hardest issues of all is to deal deal with is when people betray you. These were Jews right here in Nehemiah's presence who were opposing him in favour of his enemies, fire and tumble. Letters were frying rapidly. Laptops were being connected. Emails were multiplying. And all kinds of rumours were being uh, to say how good those other two are and how bad Nehemiah. They were making sure Nehemiah heard how much good Tambalak was doing. Because mm. every word Nehemiah said was reported back to his enemies. For example, Tobiah, his great enemy, who had also got this foothold within the Jerusalem community and dividing people's allegiances. And he was related, if you read carefully, to by marriage to various people in the community. So he's got lots of um, So far, Nehemiah had been attacked to destroy his relationship with the emperor, whose agent he was, with God, and now it's with the Jim, uh, Jerusalem community. Wedges have been inserted to try and separate him from all of these. First three attempts had failed badly. What about this fourth and last one? Let's see what Nehemiah's response is. How does Nehemiah handle this? First of all, he pray, we can praise God and say hallelujah because the wall has been built in a mere 52 layers. That ruined wall had been restored and rebuilt and the gates had been set in the wall. Everything was, was sorted out. That's the key thing. God's work has been done, then you just give it to God and say, we give it to you, God, and then you go on serving. One thing you don't want to do is uh, um, toot your own horn. Mm. Just do your work and <coughs> God will honour you. Um, what really matters is not what others are saying, like all these people are saying terrible things about me and man, but that the wall is actually completed. God's work is completed despite all this. 100 years from now, people won't be talking about what people said about you today. No, they'll be talking about the unimportant thing is that Jesus died on that cross and shouted, it is finished. The work of redemption was finished there on the cross. That's what matters. And God causes those who fire arrows at us to boomerang back on them, doesn't he? They went out all to intimidate Nehemiah. They mounted an all-out campaign, campaign against him. But they have lost weight. It's they who are intimidated. Our God is great, isn't he? He's, he's fantastic. God is good. All the time. All the time. All the time. God, God is, is good. good. Eight out of ten, maybe. Oh. <laughs> and when our enemies heard this and the nations around us were afraid and fell greatly in their own esteem, but the people of Jerusalem's esteem went up and Nehemiah's um, uh, esteem went up as well. Mm. So this guy is an honest, forthright person, totally sincere, refusing to play by the opponent's deceitful rules. Their lies were met with open, frank uh, statements showing that his deep discernment of just what those evil traps were. Above all, he has this deep faith and total trust in God. And his total refusal to be intimidated. It's often difficult to write as we see in the MR. God enabled him to see through the enemy's approaches. God gives him a true perspective and all that's going on around him. Gives him deep insight so he can see through it all. He walked closely with God to see so much of his prayerfulness as I mentioned before. This guy is totally faithful and in turn God is faithful to Nehemiah, to the Jerusalem community. And above all, God is always faithful to mm. his promises. There's a guy called J.C. Ryle, the first uh, bishop of uh, Anglican Bishop of uh, Liverpool, uh, had to build his church up in that area. Um, and he wrote this fantastic uh, section on zeal. 
A zealous person in Christianity is preeminently a person of one thing. It's not enough to say that they are earnest, strong, uncompromising, wholehearted, and fervent in spirit. They only see one thing. They care for one thing, and they live for one thing. Whether they live, whether they die, whether they're healthy, or whether they're sick, whether they're rich, whether they're poor, whatever. Whatever happens, they live for one thing, which is to please God. They get on or whether they get shame, it doesn't matter, they have a passion for one thing. And that one thing is to please God and to advance God's glory in every situation. This is uh, talking about last times um, to uh, uh, touch on the MR and this times. How can we learn something? How do you deal with false accusations and gossip and rumour that came last time? Do you fold up and get all distressed? Or do you just simply face the truth, tell the truth, and then turn into the Lord? Oh Lord, I can't cope with this. Just give me strength not to be uh, destroyed by these false rumours and gossip. When you learn from God's enemies, please don't follow them and, and don't be guilty ever of aiding and abetting the enemy and indulging in gossip and attacks on others. And the third point, there's an enemy speak, seeking to destroy you. He can go all, go all out to get you with strong intimidation. Mm. He can be subtle though, flattering you. Amazing you, but really deceiving. Beware, be careful, be constant in prayer. Remember those three points of contact from a few weeks ago when Nigel Pritchie said we need to, like a climber on the mountain, have always three points of contact. And for the Christian life, they are worship, prayer, and the Word of God. Keep all three going, keeping contact with all three. Right, so let's pray. So if our prayers can be heard above the power of the evil ones attacked by the world. <laughs> Open our eyes, Lord, to see Satan's deception clearly in our own lives and in the lives of this human. Keep us safe from these attacks. Mm -hmm. Especially we pray for the leadership of Lindsay mm -hmm. and Far Eye and Nigel and mm -hmm. Keep us fully aware of all that's around us. Keep us awake, alert, careful, constant in prayer. Help us to keep these three points of contact with you, worshipping in our hearts all the time. Praying mm. and the Word of God, reading yes, it me. and thinking mm. it from our memory markers. Keep us faithful and true mm. right to the very end. Yes, we yes. ask all this in the powerful mm. name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us. Please feel free to join us any Sunday. The address is on the screen, or you can catch up with some of our YouTube videos of previous sermons. Again, the address is on the screen. Have a look at uh, our website and find out more about Ashford Common Baptist Church. God bless you and keep you in this week ahead. Amen. <laughs>